Hey everybody, Skyler here, and in this video, I want to talk about the Bitcoin halving and talk about the importance of it, why everybody is going so crazy about it and think the price is going to pump so hard, and I'm going to go over all of that and my thoughts on this video and try to do it pretty quick, but before I end up doing that, um, just know if this is the first video of mine that you've made, uh, seen, uh, this video is made for brand new people into the space, uh, and this video, all of my uh, videos go straight to charity, this channel goes straight to charity, so every single like, subscribe, share, comment, uh, interaction on my channel absolutely goes a long ways. Um, and on that note, um, if you are new to this space, just know if you have any questions or comments, concerns, anything like that, write them down in the comments below. I, I respond to every comment. And if you have any questions whatsoever, I do a live stream every single Sunday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time, United States. So if you have any questions, you can hop on that live stream. And I am going to eventually doing, be doing multiple live streams throughout the week at different times so I can get uh, people who can't do certain ones at certain times or whatever. Um, and I do multiple videos every single week. So um, if you are new to this space, again, liking, subscribing absolutely isn't a bad idea. And I super appreciate everyone who has supported me so far. But, uh, but yeah, let's uh, get on with the video. So I keep meaning to flash this cool little subscribe thing. Whoa! Graphics! But I keep forgetting. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I'm gonna try to do this in a, uh, this is actually my like, I've recorded this so many times I can't, I've lost track my third attempt and this is like my 15th video on that third attempt but <clears throat> at any rate um, I want to break it down and first of all I'm going to explain to you really quick what the Bitcoin network is and what miners are and the importance of miners because the the price movement is because of these miners um, uh, I believe so uh, one of the major reasons anyways so I want to talk about that and then I'm going to kind of um, uh, talk about what's happened the last couple halvings and, and we'll kind of get through this together so uh, first of all uh, let me as quick as I can try to explain what Bitcoin is as simply as I can um, when it comes to how miners work in the Bitcoin network so and this chart wasn't made for this specifically I'm just using this chart because it works kind of well so um, first of all let, let, me, let me talk about traditional markets, right? Or tra uh, traditional financial system. If, you, if I want to send money, let's say I live in San Diego. I want to send 50 bucks to somebody in Tijuana, right? It's like a 10 minute drive. Um, but uh, if I want to send that to their bank, um, a bank in the United States to a bank in Mexico, um, what will end up taking place is I'll, I will need to go to my bank because I don't have my money, right? My bank does. I'll need to say, hey, I need to send money to this person over here. They're going to be like, oh, who's their bank? I'm like, this guy. Like, okay, well, we don't work with that bank, but we have a third party that works with them okay so essentially what takes place is you go to the bank the bank takes your money um, sends it to that third party the third party sends that money to the exchange then or their their bank and then the they they go to their bank and grab the money and now they have the money right and you can do this in different forms if they don't have banks you know with money gram and, and all you know other other types of, of things but this is essentially what takes place this system now this system takes people building software computing power all that sort of stuff and so they charge you outrageous fees Way more than they should, but still, um, they charge you all sorts of fees because of that. So all the Bitcoin network does is say, "Hey, all of this can be done with software." So the Bitcoin network runs it with software, makes sure everything is safe and all that sort of stuff, and your money's secure and not stolen, it can't be hacked, all that jazz. So, um, so that's all the Bitcoin network is. But it replaces all these banks and third parties and systems and people and all that stuff, all, all that sort of stuff, with the software that needs computing power. So this, so. Um, so Bitcoin network incentivizes me. They say, hey, Skylar, if you help me run the Bitcoin network, I'll give you some Bitcoin for doing it, right? Um, it'll cost you $100 um, in power, um, and you'll have to buy computing parts and stuff like that. But um, every month, that $100 in power will pay for that, and I'll give you a little bit more money um, as well on Bitcoin. And that's the incentive that people running the Bitcoin network, instead of having these buildings with these you know, with these servers that banks have, I'm helping run that that network with with my twelve hundred dollar machine and with the millions of people all all around the world, billions of people around the world with little computers. And hey, I got a computer right here. Uh, I got a laptop. I got a tablet. I got another phone. I got a computer. You know, I got a television. I got a smart refrigerator. You know, like there's all these products that have motherboards and computing power. That if everybody just takes a little bit of their computing power, um, then it can run this network really cheaply, really smoothly. And so that's all it is. So. 
I end up getting a little bit of Bitcoin um, as payment to run that network. Now what happens is, let's say I make $100 in Bitcoin to run the network. Um, I make $100 worth of Bitcoin, but it costs me $50 in power. So every single month, I'm gonna sell half of my Bitcoin that I earn to pay for that power. Um, and so that's what these miners um, and end up doing. So a huge chunk of the Bitcoin that's being sold every single day are these miners that are paying to mine the network and paying for their machines and usage and everything like that. Um, so re just remember that because that's important, right? So, um, so essentially all the Bitcoin having does and you can go to bitcoinblockhalf.com and get and you know get this uh, so you can kind of see the countdown for it. But uh, every four years, the the rewards, right? Because I'm a I'm a Bitcoin miner and I get a reward um, for running the Bitcoin network. So my reward every so instead of making a um, hundred dollars, now I'm only making fifty dollars, right? Um, uh, every four years, right? And then next four years, that $50 profit will drop to 25. It keeps dropping in half every four years. Um, and so over time, as you see in this chart, over time, um, the, uh, uh, the amount of coins ends up dropping um, in the network that it, that it ends up paying. So Right now, the Bitcoin network is inflated. It gets inflated every single year to help run the network, but the inflation decreases every four years by half. Um, so, in uh, the first halving, uh, okay, so these miners, essentially every 10 minutes, every transaction on the network gets locked into this, like, they call it a chain, right? And then every 10 minutes, a new chain of transactions gets put on the network that can never be reversed or taken away, right? So every single 10 minutes, all the miners get a reward um, depending on how much they help the network, right? So um, the first halving, every 10 minutes, 50 Bitcoins got distributed to these miners to help run the network, right? Um, that was 7,200 7, Bitcoin a day was, was given out. Um, then, and then that ended up being two, um, 2,625,000 a year. Then the next halving happened in 2016, right before the, you know, 2017 pump, right? There was only 25 Bitcoin given out every 10 minutes to the, to the miners. Um, and that was about 3,600 Bitcoin a day, about a million, um, Bitcoin a year that was given out for free, right? Um, and remember, there's only a mint, not for free, but for running the network. Right, there's only 21 million Bitcoin out there, right? This next, this next year, it's going to get cut in half again. So, um, in about a month's time, the the reward everybody gets is going to get cut from 25 every 10 minutes to 12. And so, um, every day, there's only going to be 1,800 Bitcoin given out to these miners, and and so on and so forth. Okay, so here's what it boils down to. Let me remove my camera. Um, let's uh, let's go back to the first halving. So. First having, uh, we had a bull run that took about 243 days. Um, went from 17 cents to 31 dollars, um, up 17,000 percent in a 243 day, day um, span. Then it took 163 days for that to to for the bear market went from 31 dollars down to two dollars. Now just put yourself in that situation. Went from 17 cents to 31, then started dropping, and half a year goes by. It goes from 31 to two dollars. Doesn't seem like a good buy, right? It eventually um, um, slowly goes back up, um, and then the halving ends up having happening. Now, here's what happens on the halving. Now the miners only get half of the the rewards on their on their Bitcoin, so now they don't sell nearly as much, and the selling pressure drops dramatically on the markets. So now, um, uh, now a massive amount of Bitcoin that used to be sold on the net on the network isn't being sold nearly as much. So you have more people buying than selling, but it takes a couple of months for the Bitcoins to be to get off the network. Um, and and then all of a sudden um, um, the pressure uh, is released and they're able to go into a bull market again. And so 
um, that's what happened again. So 2012, it was $12. Now put yourself in this situation. An entire year went from $12 up to $1,100. Uh, after that year, it took over a year from it, um, you know, going from over a thousand bucks. It was only twelve bucks to over a thousand. Just put this into perspective. And uh, when the '90s dot com crash happened, uh, Amazon was a little over a hundred, dropped down to like five, six, seven, eight bucks, something like that, and then went up to now it's a trillion dollar company at over two thousand dollars a share. And that took twenty years. So within one year, went from twelve dollars to eleven hundred. Um, and and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. it started crashing. Everyone's like, yeah, dude, it went from twelve dollars to eleven hundred. Of course, it's it, it you know, there's no use for it now. It's gonna you know, it's gonna crash. It took over a year for it to go to eleven hundred and down to one hundred and sixty three, and then um, and then uh, um, over two hundred and sixty nine plus two hundred and thirty four days, uh, it went from that one hundred and sixty three. Um, you know, up to uh, about the, uh, let's see, what was this? Uh, about the $600 range. So it went down um, significantly and then about 3 x over a couple of years. Then having happened again. So we had the having happen, a couple of months of the miners still selling lots of Bitcoin and then they run out and then all of a sudden the selling pressure gets lifted, it's not as much, and then a bull market takes place. We went from 657 up to $20,000 pretty much. Um, and then that ended up dropping down um, to, and now we're currently uh, around you know, well, we're currently around six, 7,000 right now. It could, depending on when you're watching this video. Uh, but yeah, we're about where it's actually showing on this chart right now, right? Um, so now we're expecting the same sort of thing to happen again. So the third halving is about a month. The next halving is about a, next, a month away. And we're expecting, um, you know, maybe not to bull market happen right at the halving, but maybe a couple months after the it, the bull market to continue. That's why a lot of people think that's going to take place. You know, just because it happened a couple of times in history doesn't mean it's going to take place again. But a lot of people think the bubble has already popped. And to that, I guess all I'm going to do is show you this um, this information right here. Uh, current market value of all the gold in the world is worth $8.8 tr uh, trillion. The United States just put $6 trillion into the economy and probably will a lot more um, before this is all over. If you end up looking at the price of coin market cap, Bitcoin's only worth $126 billion. So if you were to put that into a calculator, you would see if you were to take eight um, trillion, uh, thousand, million, billion, $8.8 trillion, divide that by the current market cap, 126, 394, 056, 773. By the current market cap of Bitcoin, you have 69 um, X profits. So if you were to take the current price of Bitcoin, which is uh, 6892, and times that by 69, you would reach a $475,000 Bitcoin price. So essentially, people are very bullish with Bitcoin because if it gets anywhere near the market value of gold currently, uh, then it, you will see massive, massive profits. So um, what do you think? Do you think the bubble's already popped? Do you think we're gonna see another bull run after the halving? I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, and I am going to leave you with that. So um, I super appreciate everyone who's watched this video. If you've made it this far, please leave a like on the video. Um, subscribe, share this with people that are new to the industry. Um, and uh, I never really know how to end these videos. But I appreciate your time. And uh, I guess I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye.